Salutations, crustaceans. This is it, the finale of the Ultimate Stingray Mod Guide. We're going to look at clips of all eight of these bases side by side, and I'm going to let you know which ones are my favorite as well as the ones that I like the least. Be sure to stay tuned to the end because there is a special surprise as well. Let's get started. Man, what a week it's been. We've looked at eight different Stingrays with eight different preamps and eight different pickups. We looked at brands like Nordstrand, Aguilar, EMG, and many others. And honestly, this was an awesome experience to be able to check out all these different pickups and preamps. Before I give my final thoughts, let's go ahead and listen to these basses side by side with the preamp centered so we know what we're working with. <laughs> slap here be the slap <laughs> Thank you. 
Now let's go over my favorite and least favorite pickups and preamps here. For my favorite combo, I'm going to give that to the EMG, as I think that combo was awesome overall and it really impressed me. I wasn't expecting it to sound as good as it did and to have it sound that good was awesome. Now with the EMG, I did have to mod the control cavity slightly by using my Dremel to remove some of the material around where the PCB chip would be in the cavity as it was hitting the shielding paint and causing a small short and giving some weird results that were not appealing. However, after removing some of that material, everything was fine. Now, just because that's my favorite pickup and preamp combo here doesn't mean that that's my favorite pickup or preamp. For my favorite preamp, I'm going to give that to the John East. This three band preamp is really good. It has a ton of different tonal options, both within the control cavity and on the control plate itself. With a bright setting and a dedicated mid sweep, this is feature packed and I really like the construction, the features and the tone. We listened to this with the stock Ray 24 pickup. That's a ceramic pickup in a sub $500 base. It sounded really good. Whereas with the stock preamp, which was the same preamp that you get within the Sterling SUB, it sounded okay, but this really brought life into the bass. So great job, John East, with this preamp. It sounds awesome. My favorite pickup of the bunch was the Bartolini. However, that was paired with a preamp that I didn't really like so much, and it was pretty pricey at $196. For a budget option, I would say the Tone Monster pickup is your best choice. At $50, it's an Alnico pickup and would be an awesome upgrade to any SUB even paired with the stock preamp. However, the Tone Monster preamp didn't really give me the flexibility that I wanted out of a three band preamp with a dedicated mid sweep. I was really hoping for more and it didn't really deliver to my expectations. And for a budget preamp, I really can't recommend one here in this particular comparison as the Seymour Duncan let me down with its cheap wires that gave me a lot of headaches and the Tone Monster did not give me a lot of flexibility or at least the flexibility I wanted out of a three band. Next cheapest one is the Aguilar, so I, I guess that wins, but that's 160 something dollars or yeah, so don't worry about that. I think the two combos that achieved the most classic Music Man-like tone were the Nordstrand and the Aguilar. I released those videos on the same day for a reason because I thought they sounded pretty close to one another and they had very similar feature sets. I personally have a hard time picking between the two as I think they're both great options. The installation for both of those preamps was a relative breeze and didn't require that much soldering overall, and I didn't have to deal with any broken wires or anything like I did in the Seymour Duncan. The Aguilar does have a pretty thick wiring spool, it does have a lot of wires there, so it was a bit of a challenge to fit all of those in the control cavity, but I did succeed without any issue. The Nordstrand was a bit easier of an installation overall, however. As for my least favorite preamp and pickup, I'm going to say the Bartolini preamp is my least favorite. With that really high price tag and lack of features, I was not really satisfied with that preamp overall, especially compared to a lot of these other offerings. Even the headaches that I had with the Seymour Duncan, I still think were a better experience than the amount of modification I had to do to the control cavity to even fit the Bartolini preamp module, which was a huge pain.
And that's no fault of Bartolini because that module isn't really meant to fit inside a Stingray, especially an SUV that has a relatively small control cavity. For the easiest preamp installation, I'm gonna give that to the John East. I basically had to slap it onto the control plate. It was all in one piece already. And then I attached the pickup and the battery and dropped it in and it was good to go. This one was the least effortful installation of the bunch. And I definitely recommend this for someone who's looking to not do a lot of soldering when they're installing their new preamp. The EMG, though solderless, does require a lot of plugging in of cables, whereas the John East preamp is basically one piece. So I'd give the EMG, I guess, a second place for that, but still, the John East was the easiest overall. Now, I didn't really mention the Minto Ray that much. I did a separate video series on that base earlier on in the year when we put that together. Uh, I thought it sounds great, and I still think it sounds great. It's a very different tone compared to what you normally get out of a Stingray. It's very, I guess, abstract for a Stingray, having that dark glass preamp and Delano pickup in there, as well as the series and parallel switch. Now, that series and parallel switch I installed myself that wasn't with the pickup or preamp, and you can do that too with any pickup that does have the two leads as well as the two grounds. All you need is a two-way on-on switch, and you can find wiring diagrams from a lot of different manufacturers. I use Delano's wiring diagram, and you can apply that to pretty much any pickup. I'll actually link that in the description below, and if I forget, leave a comment and let me know, and I'll put that in there. I might forget. <laughs> Hi, puppy. Yes, I will. So just a quick recap, the combo that surprised me the most was the EMG, my favorite pickup of the bunch ended up being the Bartolini, and my favorite preamp of the bunch, the John East. However, if you're looking to upgrade your SUV, your Ray 24, or even your Ray 34 US Stingray, though that might be more of a side grade as opposed to an upgrade, you have a lot of different options here, and I hope that you found this series informative. Now, onto the surprise. I'm going to be giving away one of these bases. Oh! <gasps> Thank God. <laughs> That's right, we are going to be giving away one of these bases here, other than Minto Ray. Minto Ray is off limits. But after this video goes live, I'm going to post a poll, and you are going to let me know which one is your favorite. I'm going to let that poll sit for about three days, and the winner after that period of time will be part of a giveaway. That's an international giveaway. All you have to do is be a subscriber, follow the directions in the giveaway, and you can win one of these bases. Only one will be given away, and that's the one that you guys vote on. All the others will be put for sale on my Reverb store on Monday morning, December 28th, 2020, at 11 a.m. Don't hold me to that, but around that time, after he gets me breakfast. After I get her breakfast. <laughs> so be sure to vote in that poll and let me know which one of these bases was your favorite. And leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about this whole series. Well, we've wrapped up the Ultimate Stingray Mod Guide. This has been an amazing experience checking out eight different preamp combos as well as pickup combos from the likes of Aguilar, EMG, Nordstrand, John East. I mean, the list goes on and on. We've checked out so much and it's been so educational as well as so much fun just to tinker with all these bases. And I hope I've encouraged you guys to tinker with your bases as well because modding is a lot of fun. So be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, Leave a comment down below. Let me know which one of these bases was your favorite. Let me know what you think about the series. Let me know stuff. It's cool. And be sure to vote in the poll to let me know which one of these is your favorite. And the one that wins will be given away to one of you lucky viewers. And as always, until we groove again.